Welcome to the Taking It Outside podcast from Spring Hill Outfitters, the show that connects you with the outdoors, with experts on guns, archery, cooking, outdoor gear, and more. Here's your host, Trent Lassiter. Oh, what's going on, everyone? Got too comfortable over here. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Taking It Outside inside Spring Hill Outfitters and Spring Hill Studio. Thank y'all for joining us. Season four. I kind of look at my paper. Season four. <laughs> Golly. Season four, episode three of Taking It Outside. Thank y'all for being here. Got a great episode planned. We're in the heart of turkey season here in eastern North Carolina. And there's been a lot of birds killed the last week. There has been a lot, a lot of birds, birds. We're going to talk all about turkey <laughs> hunting here in just a little bit, as always, before we get into all the good stuff. Find us podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. You can find us. Apple, Spotify, all that kind of good stuff. Just look for taking it outside. YouTube, if you want to watch us, which I highly recommend. It's great. Go to YouTube and look for taking it outside. And a lot of times I feel like I forget as we're recording the podcast that everybody doesn't watch. So I'll be like, I talk with my hands a lot and do funny things. I can't remember. Like some people that are listening that are not watching on YouTube, they'd be like, what is They probably don't pick crazy. up on it. Yeah. So check us out on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Spring Hill Outfitters. Uh, Facebook. Still, well, now Instagram too. Social media is tough, and we talk about this a lot. Uh, so that's we can do a whole episode. We need to do that sometime soon about yeah. social media. The battle with social media in our industry is tough, but we're still trying. So for now, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram. SpringHillOutfitters.com. You can shop with us twenty four seven. Wherever you may be, you can check us out there on SpringHillOutfitters.com. Joe Gilly, Joe Gilly Productions, the man. Uh, a bug flying around. Uh, the man who makes the podcast happen. Try to get Joe on here today to join us three, but he was tied up with his job. People I mean, work during the week, I yeah. guess, <laughs> whatever. But uh, <laughs> Joe uh, is the man that makes all this stuff kind of behind the scenes come together and sound as good as it can with who he's got to work with. But Joe also killed his first turkey. I know. I'm, a- I'm excited to hear that story. Yeah. I want to get him and Josh Marks maybe. Josh Marks is a tough one to nail down because he's all over the place. This bug right here is driving me crazy. But uh, if we can get Marks and Joel on here to talk about that story. Uh, opening day, I guess it was. Joel yep. killed his first bird. So excited for Joel. And thank him for what he does for taking it outside here in Spring Hill Outfitters. We'll go ahead and uh, introduce our special guest, Ms. Haley. My far right, your far left. Good afternoon. Hey. Ms. Haley joins us. She comes from way of Johnson County. <laughs> Had a long drive to get here today. <laughs> she uh, she came to talk some hunting and talk outdoors and turkey hunting and hear all kinds of stories and tell some stories. So we'll get to hear more from her in just a second, but happy to have her here. Since last episode, we always kind of recap the last episode. We talked about killing turkeys, and we're going to talk more about killing turkeys today. Cause it's the heart of turkey season, but since the last episode, which is like a week and a half ago now, two weeks, yeah. Uh, Miss Ashley went, she went off to Texas. We hadn't done an episode since we she went to Texas. No, we haven't. We need to. She killed her first Rio. Texas. Yep. You want to talk about that any at all, or just yeah, we can. Yeah. I didn't know if we were going to do it. No, now I mean, that's up like, to you. We can talk about it later, it later if you want to. Or? We'll talk about it later. Okay, she killed a turkey right. in Texas. <laughs> Surprise. Spoiler alert. We'll get more about that in just a little bit. But she went turkey hunting in Texas and uh, opened a day here in North Carolina. I already mentioned Joel killed a bird. A lot of birds there killed the last, of birds last week. Killed. Yeah, This past Saturday morning, I was like, you know, I'm going to sleep. I actually killed my first bird by myself Friday of last week. So Saturday, I slept in. My niece and nephew didn't want to go. And I woke up at like 7 and already had like, three pictures of turkeys that were already killed before I even woke up that morning. So a uh, lot of birds being killed, which is cool. Uh, what else has happened the last? That's pretty much it, right? Yeah, just dead Killing turkeys. turkeys yeah. Dead turkeys and dead turkeys. getting ready for Beach Fest this week. We'll talk more about Beach Fest too at the end. But All right, back to Miss Haley before we start talking about all these turkeys being killed. Miss Haley is from, grew up right here mm-hmm. in this area. Pine Level? Uh, Wilson Sam, Mills. Wilson Mills, that's yeah. a Pine Level. Uh, you went to high school at North. Yes. Played softball? Softball, volleyball, basketball, and gymnastics. Dang. <laughs> all. Uh, we hadn't really even mentioned this about softball. We'll talk about it maybe when we get done with this episode. We got some beef to talk about. We yeah. beat us in softball last yeah. week. <laughs> we had a little. We did not do too No well. beef friendly, on this side. Friendly we got the W <laughs> over yeah. here. <laughs> little, we'll talk more about it later. <laughs> After we cut the camera off. Um, 
so you are obviously we kind of met through the store and, and through Ducks Unlimited. We'll talk more about DU in a little bit too. But tell us a little bit about yourself. Obviously, you're from Wilson Mills and, and you played every sport that you could in, <laughs> in high school. But tell us a little bit about yourself growing up, all your uh, your story. My dad always, my dad has joined us for a couple of episodes. I was talking to him in the parking lot a while ago. My dad always will meet this complete stranger and say, tell me your story. <laughs> and I said, I don't know why he thinks that's exciting. He can do whatever. When you're 70 years old, you can really you can say whatever, whatever you want to. It doesn't matter, right? Like, <laughs> I nobody, don't even know where to start yeah. if somebody said that to me. That's, tell me your story. That, literally, uh, dad will meet well, this complete stranger on an airplane and is like, oh, my name's Bob and I'm from New York. <laughs> and dad is like, huh, tell me your story. I'm like, dad, you can't just ask people that <laughs> question. It's such a hot – but – with that being said, Miss Haley, <laughs> tell us your story. <laughs> You're really <laughs> showing your age. <laughs> I know. I know I'm, I'm getting old. My birthday's this week, too. Birthday's tomorrow. Golly. I'm really <laughs> acting like I it. I thought about that. <laughs> oh, Lord. All right. Tell us your story. <laughs> With that being said. Well, I grew up hunting, like, my entire life. My dad was a big deer hunter. He didn't really do much. Like, he duck hunted here and there. He might have gone turkey hunting a handful of times. But I just really grew up deer hunting. I didn't have a most uh, like a lot of time to do it because Ashley, I'm sure you can relate to this. Ball took up a lot of my time. And all I was on the a time. Ball field all the time. On every the ball field. weekend. Yeah. And so I didn't really get deep into hunting until probably after high school, and I had all this extra time where I wasn't playing ball, and I was like, I need to find a new hobby. So I dove into hunting like crazy. That was the same thing that <laughs> happened to me. I had all this time. I quit playing ball and had all this time left, and I was like. Okay, well, I guess I could hunt find more now. To do. So, yeah. Yep. And so that's what I did. And I mean, I deer hunted a lot, and I never really got into duck hunting and turkey hunting until college, where I met friends through Ducks Unlimited. And they're like, oh, we got to get you in the duck hole. Like, you would love it. And so then I fell in love with duck hunting. And then, like, sophomore year of college, they're like, you got to try turkey hunting. And first time I went turkey hunting, I was hooked. And so now I've gotten into all of it, and I'm getting deeper and deeper into it it's more expensive than more softball expensive. you spend a lot more money yes and it takes up a lot more <laughs> that's time that's not a bad thing though because we're here for it <laughs> yes we are we're here, here for it, for it. <laughs> but it takes up a lot more time than softball and yeah if what's so funny is ashley used to give me lessons in that softball ma- that makes me feel so old <laughs> let's not talk about it obviously that. she whooped your butt the in softball so the lessons must have paid off yeah already, i used so. to give Haley softball lessons when i was in college and she was like What's well, y'all's age different? I thought y'all were close in age. Is she that much? I'm younger? 22. I'm 29. Yeah, so she, I, you call me <laughs> old. You're catching up with me. <laughs> when I was in high school, like ah. I slapped, and Ashley was really good at slapping, and we played on the tra- same travel ball team for the same coaches. We just didn't play at the same time. You say you slapped? Yes. Like left handed. Oh. Like. I'm sorry. <laughs> Everybody I, I says kind of... that when you like, yeah, I slapped. And they're like, slapping what? And they're like, okay, whatever. Thought, Disregard. Okay. Anyway, so y'all slapped together. Yes. <laughs> That's neat. But we played That's for the neat. same travel ball coach, and he was like, get up with Ashley. And, and she lived right down the road. And so yep. she'd give me slapping lessons. And now it's funny because we hunt together. And, I mean, obviously I'm learning from her. And we went to Arkansas together. And I I'm don't t- feel that old until you bring that up. And I'm like, <laughs> Because like if we if we're around one another, you can't tell. Like we're we're at like the same person. And me and Ashley get mistaken for each other all the time. If we talk about it, if we had a dollar so for bad. every time oh, someone thing. thought about like we were one another, I was, I was it'd be rich. I was at a restaurant in town a couple months ago, and her <laughs> mom gets a picture of me from some random person. <laughs> And it's like, is this Haley? And it comes back down the line and I get the picture and I'm like, (laughs) and I'm looking at the guy (laughs) in the face and I'm like, oh my God, this is so weird. And then I was working the Johnson County Ducks Unlimited banquet and a guy came up to me. He was like, are you Ashley? And I was like, no, I'm not. But she's right inside. We get mistaken for one another all the time. And I don't feel like we look that much alike, but people see somebody working a Ducks Unlimited event or in camo and they're blonde and they're in Johnson County. It's either Haley or Ashley. It's got to be one or the other. It's one or the other. (laughs) You got Uh, a 50-50 chance of being right. (laughs) We'll talk more about the slapping part later. (laughs) I'm still hung up on that. Uh, We'll do a demo right here on the podcast. (laughs) Slapping lessons. Uh, so you uh, grew up deer hunting. You killed your first deer. How old you killed your first deer? You were how old? I was 14 when I killed my first deer, and that was probably one of the last times my dad went hunting with me because I think he did his job, and he was like, all right, I'm done. You're so on your own now. I had to beg my dad, like, 
every deer season, like, Dad, please just go back out there. Because I miss that. As a little girl, I grew right. up going with him all the time. And I'd take my coloring books into the blind with me. And Dad <laughs> would complain about how much noise I was making. But I was just happy to be there. I was happy to spend time with Dad. Because my dad wasn't the one that liked sports. And right. so as many sports as I played, Dad just didn't, like, click with okay. that. And so my time to spend with Dad was in the hunting stand. And... I just was happy to be there, and now Dad gives me my payback because opening day of deer season, I took him out there, and it was raining opening day of deer season, and so it wasn't really a great morning, but Dad's just sitting in the blind poking me and making noise, and I looked at him. I was like, Dad, I'm about to make you go back to the truck. (laughs) Did you bring your coloring books? (laughs) Yes. (laughs) He needs something to occupy his time. (laughs) My dad never did a lot of deer hunting. I got into the deer hunting with my grandpa. My dad's dad, my grandpa lasted her. I killed my first two deer about a mile from here with him. My dad never did a lot of deer hunting, but those memories going deer hunting, and I don't think my grandpa probably enjoyed taking me at all because I was, I'm sure I was loud and being obnoxious <laughs> and whatever else like I am now still, but I'm sure, I mean, those those memories still stand out, and we'll talk more about that later too, but that's, uh, we talk a lot about taking young folks hunting, and, and uh, to them or to you at that time, he probably meant nothing to you because you're like, you know, but now the older you get, you're like, those actually were kind of fun times about there hanging out with my dad when I was, 14 years old and that's neat and I don't think you really realize how much you enjoy hunting and enjoy the outdoors till you go sit out there by yourself yeah. because you don't have anybody else to help you occupy your time and you're really just stuck by yourself yeah. Yeah. and taking everything in and that's when I really started falling in love with it because it became a deeper meaning to me than just yeah. going out there and harvesting something it was just really taking in the outdoors and enjoying it well I think deer hunting's that way and we and we can talk more about hunting by yourself in a little bit too but as far as deer hunting you kind of unless you have like a box blind or a two-man stand you're kind of hunting by yourself anyway but that's when you go deer hunting sometimes it's good to even not even take any ammo or take an arrow just take your bow or your gun just go ahead and sit just to hang out yeah and and to unwind if you've had a bad day or a long day or whatever like you know i'm going to go sit in the deer stand and i hope a deer doesn't walk out i just want to go sit and kind of just have some me time and hang out oh that definitely happened to me this year i killed one back in october and it was on a saturday and that Sunday, I was like, I don't care if I go and even see anything. It's just been a bad day, yeah. and I want to go sit out there. And I saw, like, 10 deer that day. And <laughs> I was like, it's just funny how that happens. That yeah. happened to me, too. I was I didn't go deer hunting too many times this year, but I, I was having a bad week. And I was like, I'm going to go, and I'm going to go sit, see what happens. And I sat down, and it wasn't five minutes. It started raining. And I was like... I wasn't in a box block oh either, gosh. and I was like, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> and I, I sat there. It wasn't, like, hard raining, so I just sat there. I was like, it'll be fine, you know. And then it started, like, raining, <laughs> raining. And I was like, that's it. I'm done. And I stood up, and I looked down, and there's five deer under me. And I was like, well, okay, I'm going to sit here. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. They'll they'll mosey on. They did not mosey on. <laughs> they did not mosey on at all. It got dark, and I was like, okay. I got down, and they just walked off, not even from here to the wall, and just watched me <laughs> soaking wet. Yeah. Yeah, hunting, I mean, and that's what we talked about, like I mentioned a while ago, about sh- turkey hunting by myself for the first time this past week. And, and we had a conversation in Texas when I was in Texas a couple of weeks ago with the guys that I was hunting with. We had a long afternoon with no birds, and we were trying to chalk and chit-chat and get to know each other. But we had that conversation about hunting by yourself in regards mainly to turkey hunting, about how it's, it's fun to hunt by yourself, to kill a bird by yourself. And I did that, and I was it was a cool experience, and glad I got to do it. Because if y'all listened to the last episode that we had here with Josh Marks and Miss Ashley, you'll understand how important it was to me because both <laughs> of them talked a lot of junk about how I couldn't call a turkey up. <laughs> Foggy Bottom couldn't pull it off, and Foggy Bottom pulled it off. Foggy, so foggy bottom. I had to do off. that. I had to. I, I really had to do. I had no choice but to do that hunt for me <laughs> and for them. And I texted Miss Ashley and I was like, "Look, I don't want to hear another word about foggy bottom because <laughs> I just came through by myself." Anyway, the point of all that is, we were talking in Texas about that, and it's fun to go by yourself. But like turkey hunting, like every hunt I've been on before this past week, after I kill a bird, I'm with buddies, and you get up and you high five and you're like hugging and like, yeah. Doing stuff that guys normally don't do <laughs> in, a, in, a control, in a controlled environment. Guys but it's cool. Like you're pumped up, right? So you got your buddies and you, whoever may be with you. And, and I'm sure girls maybe do the same. I don't know if y'all do the same thing or not. But it's like high five. And like, yeah. it's really cool to experience that with somebody else. And and I 
when I killed that bird this past week, I jumped up and I was like, well, yeah, kind of. And we talked about it too. The bird <laughs> you killed last thing. year in Virginia, she killed her. And she was like, I don't have anybody. She didn't have cell phone service. Luckily, I had cell phone service. So I started calling people and talking to people, trying to say, hey, I just killed a bird. You're not here. And most everybody was asleep because it was before 7 a.m. Yeah. So I called my dad who was at the cab and I was like, hey, I killed a turkey. Wake up, come on down here and share this moment with me. And he did. And it was really <laughs> cool. But uh, it is fun to hunt by yourself, to have that alone time. But it's also, I think if I had a choice, I would choose when you have the opportunity to hunt with a buddy or a friend or somebody. Turkey hunting in general is very, very rewarding to me. Yeah. It's just very hard, so it's very rewarding. And, yeah, like I, I really enjoy hunting with my friends, but last year when I killed that bird by myself, it was just like full circle moment. I just had my a moment yeah. by myself, and I was just so proud and so happy and so excited and I like I shot it. I ran out there. I grabbed it, and I was like, "Yeah!" And I looked around, and I was like, "I'm by myself." I don't know what to okay. do. Okay, all right. I guess I'll just walk back now. That was exactly yeah. what happened to me. You've killed a couple of birds before. Yes, one, a couple, two, three. Four. Yeah. So, what the, it's a funny story how I got into turkey hunting. I've never had any turkeys on the farm that like at my house where right. I usually hunt at, and. Three days before turkey season last year, my granddad calls me and was like, there's like 10 turkeys at the hog houses in Kenley. Like, won't you go get rid of them? And I'm like, all right. Great. I have no clue how to turkey hunt. What Never was that done. address that had the 10 turkeys? <laughs> what, They're what way road gone was that now. <laughs> what hog house was it? And so literally <laughs> I went and bought calls. I watched YouTube videos. Bought calls from? Spring Hill Outfitters. Outfitters. Spring Hill Outfitters. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> And oh, and Harley, my brother, had won a turkey vest at a banquet at the farm Thank like you. earlier that year. So luckily I had a turkey vest. All the plugs. But <laughs> I watched videos on how to call like for those three days. I went out there opening day with one of my friends. He showed me where to set up and like what to do. And I got the feel for it. We heard a few that morning, but didn't see anything. So I went out a few days later to that same spot by myself. And this Tom was fired up from the roost. And I'm just getting excited. I'm all by myself. And I'm like, well, what do I call? Do I call now? And I'm like texting him the whole time. Like, do I call back now? Do I wait? Like, what do I do? And he's like, just give it some time. Like, call every now and again. And I'm like, all right. Next thing I know, I see him strutting into the field, like straight into the decoys. And I'm just full of adrenaline at this point. And being a little girl shooting a 12 gauge with TSS in it, I was like, oh, this is about to hurt. And I just put my sight right on them and I let loose. And next thing I know, there's a bird on the ground, didn't feel that kick at all. And I was so excited and I was ready to share this moment. And then I'm by myself and I'm yep. like, where does all this energy go? And I'm on my Jeep at this point. And I'm like, I'm about to have to throw this dead turkey in the back of my Jeep. And it's just smelled terrible. So I FaceTime literally my dad. My dad's always the first call every time I kill something big. Like, dad, look what I've done. Because he gets so happy about it. And I know he misses out on, like, when we would hunt together. So I always try to include him every time I kill something. And he was so proud of me. And then I call my brother. And I'm like, hey, need you to come pick this turkey up. And he was like, I'm at work, Haley. Like, what people do during the week, I can't, I can't go help you. And I'm like, oh, crap. I know nothing about cleaning a turkey. I don't know what to do. So I call my buddies. I was like, hey, what do I do with this turkey? And they're like, bring it to the house. We'll help you. And I was like, just wanted a fan mount on it. And I get it there. And like I said, never been turkey hunting before. So I didn't really know what to do, not what to expect or anything. I get it to the house. They're like, Haley, this is one of the biggest birds I've ever seen. You need to get a full body mount on it. It had like 12 inch beard, inch and a quarter spurs. So I ended up getting a full body mount on it and it sits in the house now. But that was the best experience ever because I, I felt so proud of myself since yeah. it was only my second time turkey hunting, first time I'd ever been out there. But I think I do like going hunting with other people because yeah. that energy can like be dispersed on them. I actually brought my turkey here right after you I did. Yeah, you, did. Turkey. you did bring it and we took some pictures yes. out here. I and I was so glad because I didn't have any pictures in the field. I tried to set up my phone to like record it and like try to fan it out, <laughs> make it look that, cool, man. but it didn't look good. So I brought it up here and you actually took a picture in front of the store and I yep. had that. We posted it on. I need to yeah. find that picture and post it again this week. <laughs> yep. I forgot about that. That's awesome, man. We talked. You talked about getting into duck hunting. I know y'all both do a lot of waterfowl hunting too. But that's one thing I think one reason I love duck hunting so much. This past year, I had one hunt by myself, just because it wasn't by choice. Because I just don't have many friends. 
<laughs> I just, wow. it just hurt that. My well, dad, we can my help dad, you out. Just let us know dad, when you want to go. <laughs> my dad and I were down at our place at Green Wing Hunt Camp, and it, we were going to hunt together, and, and we decided to split up to keep the birds up. So I, it was by choice that I hunted by myself, and I was going to get done early, hopefully, and leave. And, and um, it was fun, but – here again, the same conversation. I think that's why I enjoy duck hunting so much because usually it's two or three buddies and our blinds are like eight foot. So two or three guys or girls, whoever may be down there, are hunting together in the blind and and uh, the fellowship and the camaraderie and talking junk and making fun. And that's what it's, yep. that's one thing I enjoy about duck hunting, which I mean, it's, it's, I enjoy duck hunting, period. But it's fun because you have that fellowship with other people, too. Yeah, and duck hunting is, like, one of those you don't have to be extremely quiet and extremely still, no. yeah. like deer hunting and turkey hunting. Like, you can sit there and cut up in the blind yeah. and have a good time, and that's why I really like duck hunting. I think yeah. I've finally talked my dad into going to Arkansas with me next year, oh. and I'm so excited that about it. That will be it. a good time. I tried to do it this year. It just didn't work out, timing and stuff, but I think he's definitely going to go next year, so I'm pretty That Arkansas that. mug could talk. <laughs> We've had some good times. Tell it to be quiet. <laughs> While we're on Arkansas and talking about duck hunting, I mean, y'all obviously, what, what's your favorite thing to hunt now? Let's ask that question first. That's one thing we always ask all of our guests. Oh, well, that's hard to say because like we're in the midst of turkey season right now. So obviously I'm ate up with turkey hunting. If you had to go one, one more hunt the rest of your life, what kind of hunt would it be? It'd probably be waterfowl. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mm. Because you I'm, can have a skunk morning and still have a good time in the blind yeah. and it still be stories yeah. to tell. Like you kill two wood ducks and you still got a story to tell about it, or you could kill your limit and more and have a great story. Yeah. So I think I'd definitely have to go with ducks. And you got into duck hunting, you said, when you were in college, like yeah, the last couple so, of years? Yeah. So I really got into duck hunting when I joined Ducks Unlimited, and I was like, I can't be in Ducks Unlimited and not be an avid <laughs> duck hunter here. And so I started to I will going say, while you're, on, while you're on that conversation, before I forget about it, the opposite of what you just said, my dad always said, folks that wanted to go duck hunting at our place in Hyde County, he required them to be a member of Ducks Unlimited. He's like, if you have to be a member of DU, like pay your membership to come duck hunt. Because if you want to come down here and duck hunt, you need to be able to support and raise right. money for to conservation to any kind of – and there's a pile of conservation groups out there. We don't get into that today. But you should be a member of one of those, if not you know, a few of them, to – give some money, have some skin in the game. If you want to go duck hunting, you need to have a little bit of effort. And so what yeah. you were saying was the opposite of that. You were in DU but decided to start duck hunting. Yeah. But that's the, I mean, it kind of, if you want to be a duck hunter and want to go out and, and kill ducks, if it's a wood duck or a pintail, whatever it may be, you should have at least a little bit of skin in the game when it comes to raising money to help the wetlands and everything yeah, else Yeah, that's too, a so. quick plug yeah. for Delta and Ducks Unlimited. Yeah. I'm sorry, do, you your, do your little part. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And like, I mean, I met so many people, like I had plenty of people to get duck hunting with, but I'm sure you can attest to this. There's not, there wasn't many girl duck hunters. And so you're usually going with a bunch of guys and that's, I know y'all hate that. Well, <laughs> well, when you're younger, it's fine. And yeah. then everybody starts getting older and these guys get girlfriends and then, you know, life yes. is life and everything. It's just, it, things just get weird. So then you're just like. Well, the I don't know who I'm going to yeah. go with. And you know. that's why I'm glad, like, we found sisterhood because we could go on duck hunts with all girls that had the same enthusiasm for it as we did and passion as we did. And me and Ashley actually, or I went on my first sisterhood hunt with you. Mm -hmm. And I remember Ashley texted me and was like, are we about to go to Arkansas right now? And I'm like, yo, we are. And we've met so many people through that. Like, I have friends all across the country. I'm sure you do too It's now. so funny. Now I hunt with girls more times than yes. I hunt with the dudes. Yes, absolutely. So. And that I mean, that's pretty much the same with me. The friends that I've met through them, I'm hunting with them more than I'm hunting with, like, my friends I initially started going duck hunting with. Because, like you said, like, yep. you'll get girlfriends or you'll get a boyfriend. And it's just the respect thing that yeah. you don't want it to be awkward anymore. Yep. So. While you're on that, too, talking about sisterhood of the hunt, we talked about it some before, Miss Ashley. And I, I guess uh, – at some point, we're going to get whoever. Uh, if we get, yeah, I would love to We're going to try to get together get with to, them to come join yeah. us for an episode when we can all work it out. But um, a little bit about that, I guess, is, and y'all have heard about it if you listen over the last couple of seasons, but it's this group of girls, and pretty much they have a social media account. Yep. And it's pretty much uh, chicks only. Guys aren't allowed, I guess, <laughs> but it's only females. I mean, basically. Females yeah. that, uh, like they're talking about that want to go hunt, but maybe don't have a dad or a boyfriend or a husband or whatever to take them, or they don't have whatever they want to go hunting. And you can, they have opportunities, uh, throughout the year 
different kinds of hunting, mainly waterfowl, uh, mainly Arkansas, I think, in that area. And if I'm wrong, y'all can correct me. But you pretty much can, like, follow them on social media, befriend these these uh, young ladies, and then if they have an opportunity to come up for a slot and you want to – you're free that weekend, you can just, like, pay them and sign up and go and hunt with all these other females. Yeah. Yeah, yeah actually, they were – um, there were some of them in California this past weekend, turkey hunting, and in Oklahoma, tur- turkey hunting too. So, yeah. um, between waterfowl and turkeys, and um, they've got a lot of other stuff coming up. Yeah, they're to branching offer. out a lot but, more. Um, yeah, if you if you want some girlfriends to hunt with, that's a good place to start for sure. Oh yeah, and it's definitely <laughs> lifelong friends made during that because Very there's much. some girls that, or even like in Eastern North Carolina that I didn't know and I met them on sisterhood and now we hunt together all the time and it's a blast and I've got friends in Georgia and South Carolina and Tennessee and they're like all right let's trade off a bird like I'll get you a bird down here and you get me a bird up there we'll trade off a duck hunt and it is awesome like I don't want to hunt with anybody else now I don't know I mean not to be like sexist or anything but I don't know if there's an opportunity or anything like that for dudes is there it's unfortunate. I don't have ever heard of any like. I mean, I, and obviously females like they were talking about. It's kind of usually like, usually most guys have buddies and hunt whatever yada yada yada. But I don't know of that same type of thing for guys, which is a really cool concept, uh, where like a single person could sign up. You know, well, like one. Yeah, I mean, I mean on, people do guided hunts for like groups of three and four. But like if one person wanted to go somewhere, I don't know of an opportunity for guys. Well, that, guys, that let's be honest, guys are not as open to. It's easy. I'm just saying, <laughs> guys are not what? as open to just be like, hey, I have a whole... Hey, I'm going to go hunt with all of these people I don't know. Yeah. Girls will do it eight days a week before a guy does it. Right. I need some more guys in here to back me up. <laughs> I'm outnumbered. I can't I mean, say myself. seriously, because <laughs> like, the first time I went on, it just worked out that I knew um, a couple girls that were going too, but overall, it was just like, screw it, I'm going. Didn't didn't care who was going, and now it's so funny. Everybody on that first trip, we all we talk every day. We got a group chat since that since that trip, and we talk every day. And I think we're gonna hunt the same weekend every year until I guess we can't. I mean, we got to grow up at some point. I think, but <laughs> I mean, soon. and it's funny because like this past year we went, and one of the girls have had a baby since then, and she came along. Yeah, like, I met one of the girls I went hunting with in Arkansas this past year, and I got invited to her wedding, and I went to her wedding last month. And it's just, like, crazy how close you get so quick, and the bond you share so quick. It was awesome. And then Hannah, a girl named Hannah, she's from uh, Texas. Her um, kids are getting a little bit older now, and she took her little girl. She's probably seven-ish, eight. She's young, but old enough to, like, mind, you know. Um, and she took her on a hunt in Uvalde with the girls, a crane, I think it was a crane hunt. I could be wrong on that, but she fell in love. She is all about the ducks now and it's, it's just cool to see. Well, and I, obviously Miss Ashley's with us pretty much every week here, but while Miss Haley's here, let's talk while we're on the subject of talking about females hunting, any, any words of wisdom or advice or Anything you could share with anybody to think as far as I know, I, I, I like my sister, for example, she hunted a lot growing up. And you mentioned while about getting boyfriends, and, and you mentioned boys getting girlfriends, or whatever. But a lot of girls hunt with their parents or whatever growing up, and they get 12, 13, 14, they find other things to do and they get out of hunting. But like anything that you want to share, I mean, because a lot of girls, it's a guy dominated sport, right? right. So if I, people think camo and hunting, this is guys, but obviously, you know, girls hunt too, and uh hunt just as much as guys do but anything that y'all would want to talk about or share with some younger and we've had miss um gracie and avery avery uh the thornton sisters Mm -hmm. talking about hunting the end of last season uh they're like 16 15 15 14 around there but anything y'all want to share for young up-and-coming girls who maybe want to go hunting not they don't hate to but they're kind of like i don't really know if i should be going hunting. anything y'all want to share or talk about that as far as girls hunting? You definitely will have some people that will have something to say. You right. just have to ignore them. Yeah. Because there's going to be those guys, and it's with anything. It's not just with hunting. If it's anything, I face it in the agricultural world because that's where I'm going to school for. It's a male-dominated industry. You're going to look be looked at as you don't know as much as I do because you're a female. You have to just go out there, 
kill whatever you're killing that day and prove them wrong. You can't be, like, upset with them because you know in your heart that you love the sport and you love to be out there and you can do it just as good as any of the guys. And you just go out there and you show them that whatever they say, you don't care. They can tell you you can't call. They can tell you you don't know anything about guns. They can tell you you're just wearing Sitka for the looks of it, that kind of thing. I hear it all the time. And I just let it roll off my back because I'm out there to have a good time. I don't care what people say. If they say I'm just doing it for social media, we heard that a lot when Sisterhood <laughs> first started. They would make comments. We have this joke called the stands of the world because there's always a stand that's going to say something about y'all are just doing it. Y'all have got makeup on in the blind. Y'all are just doing it for social media. No, <laughs> we're not. We're doing it for the good time and fellowship we're having with our friends. And we actually enjoy being out there. But we don't have to answer to them. It's our part to be out there, and we love to do it, and we're going to go out there regardless. And I feel like if it's something you love to do and you develop that at a young age, stick to it because the lessons that I've learned in the outdoors have been a lot helpful in real life than what I've learned in school because I'm sure y'all both can attest to this. It teaches you patience. It teaches you the reward. We haven't, we haven't figured that part out yet. <laughs> <laughs> Patience is not in my It toolbox. does take a little while I'm not to learn. learn that yet. <laughs> but you're not going to have a good hunt every time you go out in the woods. But yeah. I, I always tell myself there needs to be one thing I take for, from each hunt. I need to learn something from each hunt about myself, about the woods, about God's creation. And so I always try to do that. And that way it's not a bad hunt, but I'm taking something from it. Right. And if you find that kind of connection in the outdoor world, and you stick with it, no matter what anybody says about you, you're going to have a good time regardless, and you're going to be able to stick with it. And that's all I can say. Like, just yeah, stick with it. Yeah, kind of the same thing. If you want to go, go. It it really doesn't matter what anybody else has to think or say about it. I think I it mean, takes a little while, like, as a girl – to figure that out because when you're in high school, you're all worried about what people are thinking about you yeah. and what you're going out doing and what people are saying about you. Then you get older and you're like, it Who doesn't cares? really matter Who what cares? you say about me. It doesn't me. matter what you do. Yeah. It's always something. Someone's so going to have something to say. Do what you love. Do what you want. Wear your makeup. Don't wear your makeup. Wear your bottom land. Wear your Sitka. And, and for me, I'm just like, I'm not getting in a pissing contest with a man. About who can call better. Exactly. Or who can shoot better. We're, we're, I'm not doing it. it no. I'll like, be the first you, one to I, tell like, you. Do you feel better? That yeah. You can, that you're hiding behind a screen typing well, these so, words. Do you feel better that you can shoot better than me? Well, by golly. I'm glad. I hope you I'm sleep so, so glad. I, you know, I don't know. I just, we, we have such a good time on every trip. Yes. I don't know if I've ever been on a trip and just been like, all right, I'm ready to go on. This sucks. I oh, mean, yeah. seriously, every trip I leave, and I, there was there's been a couple times I've left Arkansas like crying. Yeah, I didn't want to leave. leave. I didn't want to leave. So, um, which was funny to me because I've grown up with guys and hunting with guys. So, like, I was a little weary about my first girls trip because I was like, I'm not a girls girl. Like, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not same. a girls girl I'm at all. Same. But those girls are so like minded, and they think just like you, and they're out there to have a good time at the blind and kill stuff and you have a good time in the past i've had a couple of you know close girlfriends yeah. but not like a big group of girls no. um so kind of the same thing i was like oh, this is probably going to be filled with a lot of drama yeah but it really wasn't we're all we all have experienced the same things just we just are all scattered across the country yeah. as far as like not having a lot of girlfriends that you grew up hunting with and yeah. that kind of experience. So, um, seriously, you, you, you meet so many people and you're all on the same page. Yeah. So, uh, I feel I'm like, he, I feel like he's getting um, a little, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> Trent, Trent over here. I'm back. No, uh, uh, you all can be honest and you know, your story, that sounded great. As girls are known for drama and in this business and in my life, guys have just as much drama as girls do sometimes. So I understand what y'all were saying about everybody was like-minded. Guys were supposed to be less drama than girls are. And I go hunting for four days with guys. And by the fourth day, I'm like, <laughs> get me home. So y'all can be honest. <laughs> you don't have to call names or anything, but y'all don't have to act like it's all great. Everybody just gets along the whole time. Cause I know even with guys and I know girls have to be the same, if not worse than guys after four days, like in a one room 
cabin hunting in the same blind by the last day you're like man this has been great but i'm ready to get away from some of these folks right here i feel like you're <laughs> in every group you're going to have a few bad apples i'm and just saying like i don't like even like a, i'm not in a hunt trip like any kind of trip if you're around somebody for like a lot of you know yeah by the last day you're like all right. I feel like every group we're going to have a few bad <laughs> apples, but I, I don't know. Like, I There's, really don't Maybe y'all don't have that. I don't know. Maybe I don't it's just know. a guy I, thing. I, don't, I mean, I really haven't had an experience yet with a trip that's like, no. God, I'm ready to go. This, I All mean, I really have it. It's just, you just click. There may, be, there may be one that maybe it just turned out it wasn't their thing and you never see them again, never yeah. talk to them again. It's yeah. fine. But as a, as a whole, as a core... There's so many of those girls that I hunted with on the first and second trip, and we hunt together every time now. Yeah. Like, the group that went to Canada, 99% of us are going back to Canada. Yeah. This year, uh, one of the girls is having a baby, so she's not going to be able to come. But And then one girl got in the nursing school, so she's not going to be able to come. But the group, you know, we're all going Let's again. Together, yeah. So. <laughs> I always – I mentioned this before on the podcast, but I help out with the North Johnston uh, – shooting team the high school shooting team and I always every year we have at least one female sometimes more than one but at least one and I always love when a girl out shoots the guys the guys get so mad oh yeah it's always good yeah. to have a well we have a shooting female. range at my at my dad's house and so we go out there and shoot all the time and dad gets sneak on and we gotta get tested out so me and dad always have competitions and and it's starting to get to that point where I'm starting to beat dad and yeah. dad's not beating me every time like I can clearly out shooting him with a bow and arrow now and i think he's got that sense of pride in him but he's proud that his daughter is yeah. shooting this good but yeah. also like oh my gosh my daughter's beating me right now and so it's just a healthy competition and then my dad will make jokes to my brother like oh yeah Haley can out shoot you she can out kill you that kind of thing and <laughs> my brother just takes it it's like all right whatever, whatever. and it, and okay so let me not hate on all the guys real quick Thank you. Because, let me great, let me give y'all some grace here there, you are going to run into some of those guys for sure, but then you're also going to run into people, guys, just guys in general, some of your guides, outfitters, uh, just friends that you meet, and they are so supportive. Yes. They are so supportive of us and, you know, our friends and everything we do. So let me not hate, let's not hate yeah, on you, all of them. But. Do you remember that time we were sitting at Mexican the, when we went to Arkansas and Jonathan was talking about, he was talking with his guide buddies and he was like, you got a group of guys coming in this weekend? And he yeah. was like, no. He's like, are you not hunting this weekend? He goes, yeah, I am. He goes, you just said you didn't have guys coming in. He goes, I don't want to have 14 girls coming <laughs> in. And it like, was, it, Yes, he was getting his hair cut <laughs> yes. and his, his barber was like, Wow. Okay. <laughs> but they are definitely, and I've had a bunch of guy friends like, can I just slip on a wig and go with y'all? Like, I feel you like def- that's what's going through his head right now. <laughs> Me? Yeah. I wouldn't be getting there. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be. I know. No. You definitely have both I, ends I enjoy of the spectrum. Going, I enjoy going hunting. I wouldn't be good there. <laughs> Not be good. Not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'll oh, stick to green wing <laughs> Uh, you mentioned Ducks Lemon a while ago, and you've been real involved with NC State DU for a while now. NC State DU was um, – I actually met Andrew when he was in college. Uh, he was a few years younger than me. But NC State DU, like 2007, 2008, when I first started going to the NC State DU events, and they were the largest in the country for the first time around that same time. We really had a big event, but it was in the whole house we're building. They had like 600 people, maybe 500 people, and but it was a huge event, and now it's grown, and they have over 1,000 people. Anything you want to talk about DU for your experience? I know yeah. you're about to graduate here soon, yes. right? So your experience with DU at NC State, what you want to talk about? Yeah, so in high school, I was really involved with FFA, and so when I got to college, I was like, I need to find something that I'm that involved with because I need I have all this time I need to occupy with. So I had some friends was like, let's go try out DE, and I went to the first cookout, and I met so many like-minded people there, and I was like, all right, these are my people, and it was a bunch of College of Agriculture kids, but a bunch of people that weren't in College of Agriculture or didn't hunt, and we just had a good time. And then I started getting really involved and started doing more activities with it. And I watched this chapter grow and expand. And it became such an amazing thing to watch. And I started going to all these events, like, and became an officer. And it just started growing and growing and growing. And it was just, it like, it was a sense of pride in yourself, knowing you were a part of something bigger. 
And I love that because I knew I loved to hunt. And this was my part of giving back of hunting. Yeah. And last year we had, we were setting history book records. Like we had the largest event and I think we had like 15 or 1600 people at our banquet. And so this year around me and two other of my friends, we were co-chairmen and we're like, we, we want to make something bigger. Like, we set history last year. We want to keep doing it. And so we got, after our oyster roast finished up a couple weeks ago, we found out we were back-to-back national champions. So we're number one in the country again this year because they changed awesome. the physical year. They changed they, the physical yeah. year for the college chapters. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. they didn't change it for y'all? No, they oh, have okay. not changed it for the regular chapters, just uh, varsity. Oh, okay. So, yep. Yeah, so, well, we're back-to-back champions again, and we had another history book event we had close to 1900 people there in the fall and raised a lot of money for the ducks and then the oyster roast we we have to cut it off at this point for the oyster roast because the oyster roast has always been something for our members to have a good time and relax the seniors to enjoy their last event and it's just becoming a smaller banquet for us and so we had to cut it off at 800 tickets I think a few more people got in the door and I think we had closer to 900 but it's just an amazing thing to watch because you work so hard for these two events right. all year long. And I feel like when we get to school in August, we're already preparing for our event in November. And we're working so hard and it gets to November and we have this big event. And then a couple of weeks later, we have a celebration event for our members. And we go home for Christmas break and we get back and we're starting to prepare for our <laughs> oyster roast. And we do all that. And then it's the same thing. The yeah, following absolutely. year, and you're always preparing for just these two events that seem like not a much, but there's so much that goes into it because we really care about our attendees and their experience and what would make it better for them if we had this food there and these drinks there and this on the live auction. And there's so much time that goes in behind the scenes that I don't think people realize, right. but it is so worth it at the end of the night when you're seeing all the smiles on the faces when people win something or buy something on the live auction. And it yeah. is. The NC State DU, the event in the fall, has definitely become a to-do around here. Oh, absolutely. Everybody around here that loves a duck is going to make their way to that event. So everybody you know is at that event, and it's so much fun. We advertise it as the biggest party in Raleigh, because that's exactly what it is. Where can you go for $40 where you get all you can eat, all you can drink, Yep. And you're getting raffle booklets to enter in. You yeah. can walk home with decoys or a shirt or a hat. And so we advertise it's large party in Raleigh. And that's what it is. It is the largest party in Raleigh, especially as the time keeps progressing. And we're, I mean, I'm sure that'll be a 2000 person event in the next year. Yeah. When I was uh, in college, it was a lot of, you saw tables of girls from like Meredith that didn't know what a duck was. They were just there <laughs> to go eat and drink, which is fine. I mean, right. So, um, it was uh, it was kind of a, it was a party back then, but it was like a third of the size of what it is now, yeah. and it just started kind of to grow. Back Texas A and M used to have a big one, I uh, call it Duck Jam, Duck Jams or something back in those days. But NC State took over number one, and ECU has a very successful. Of course, we're big in Ducks Unlimited, and uh, you have competition in oh, yeah. different counties and different schools <laughs> want to have. But at the end of the day, you know, being involved with DU and and the conservation and, and the hunting world industry. Our main goal was to raise as much money as we can. Yeah. And I love DU. We support Delta Waterfowl. We support Quail Upland Wildlife Federation Foundation Association, whatever it is. It's coming up here in a couple of weeks at the farm. CCA, NRA, Turkey Federation, a lot of good groups out there. And, um, you know, we support all those groups here at the store. But it's good. And, you know, it's, it's competition and, and a rivalry is good. But ECU's got a really successful event. No way is quite the size of NC State. But they do a really good – their event's always in February, I think. It is. In Greenville. So, um, And it's so funny that you say that, like, about the rivalries, but all coming together. Like, ECU's obviously our North Carolina yeah. rivals. We always go back and forth with them. But we have our, like, college event where they present all the awards to us in yeah. usually July or August that we go to Memphis, Tennessee for – and we can talk all the crap we want to to ECU, but we hang out with them mostly yeah. when we're there. And those are our people, and we're all there for the same cause. That's and right. even though we'll win something or they'll win something, we'll give a little banner back and forth. But we're all there for the same. Like, we know we yeah. all love hunting, and we'll hunt together. Like, ECU and NC State did a swan hunt together yeah. back 
I don't remember uh, when. January. Yeah. And yep. I mean, you can talk all the crap you want, but we all come together in yep. the end and we all have the same calls for it. And it's just a healthy rivalry at the end of the day. Yeah. Well, that's like, you know, I've been involved with Johnson County since I was like 12 or 13 with old, the late General Lee. I uh, got myself and daddy involved when I was, tw- I think it's 12 or 13. Well, anyway, I've been involved ever since then. And, you know, we've had years like with Harnett County or Wilson County and trying to figure out who can raise the most money. But we all support each other's banquet. You know, we go to Harnett County's yeah. banquet. They always come to ours. We go to Wilson. They come to ours. And we work together. Wilson County buys stuff from the store. Yeah. Uh, Miss Chelsea is another female who's done great things with DU. She's uh you don't see many area chairmen that are uh, females, yeah. and Miss Chelsea's done a great job at Wilson County DU. So, it's uh, the end of the day. The end goal is to raise money for the group, whether it be DU or Delta, whoever it may be. As long as it's going to the right place, the right reason. Yeah. That's uh, what it's all about. So, things just don't happen by ourselves. That's what Daddy was saying, you know, we're in full mode now in Hyde County on getting the farm ready for duck hunting, and people think they just go down in January and it just they just show up at Greenwing Hunt Camp and everything just happens yeah. magically and it just is there right and just let's we'll go hunting but it takes it's a 12 month job year round and that's what we're doing i say we i'm really not doing a whole lot i went to turkey <laughs> this past week so i don't want to say i'm doing a whole lot but uh they uh the three amigos of course uh, mr eddie and mr jim and daddy have been working really hard the farm looks great just planted the corn this week and and uh got everything sprayed and dissed and it looks really good but it's a lot of work and ducks unlimited in these groups this money raised for conservation uh, and there's arguments about the money stays here, the money goes somewhere else or whatever. But you have to think about, too, the ducks don't stay here, but mm-hmm. a couple months yeah. out of the year, you know, the ducks stay most of their time up north or wherever it may be. And, and uh, so we, it's a big debate about uh Well, I, I, I make the though. argument of, you know, people get so uptight about where Delta or Ducks Unlimited spends their money and what state they put it in, what flyway they put it in, and... I mean, you don't pay your taxes just because you don't like where it gets put. So, right. Yeah, yeah but that's good. Do you use, uh, when you graduate, you can come and get more involved with us over in Johnson yeah. County. Yeah. We got to start up here soon. Yeah. We need to do we something. Got to get on that. Uh, <laughs> turkey, the turkey banquet while we're on conservation, the Johnson County turkey. We met with Mr. Keith Allen. Um, we had a really cool event a few weeks ago, the kids turkey hunt tournament, the junior yeah. turkey takedown was really, really cool. We talked about it on the last episode. I think we recapped that yep. on the last episode. I won't get into the details of that, but since then we talked to Mr. Keith and looking maybe hopefully next year incorporating our Johnson County long beards, which is the NWTF chapter of Johnson County, kind of incorporating that event, maybe somehow through our kids turkey hunting event, doing a banquet and it kind of all kind of yep. working together, which is cool. Uh, what other kind of hunting stories you want to share while you're here with us today on this lovely well, afternoon? Well, I was hoping I could come here today with a fresh uh, turkey killing story, but yesterday was one of those days what where... What happened? So, I had a wedding on Saturday, so I was not able... I was so exhausted from the wedding, I did not be able to go Saturday We've had this conversation Sunday. before, too. If people that plan weddings... Oh, please be considerate. Season, <laughs> I mean, just look at your local game calendar, your yes. regulations. Duck season... Deer season and turkey season. Other than those three seasons, whenever you want to plan a wedding, outside of like holiday weekends. So we got I mean, July 4th, we got Memorial Day, Labor Day. Don't do it on those weekends. And make sure you check your college football schedule. Yes. So outside okay. of any of that February, time. February, March, May, June, July, August. Are these good or bad months? I mean, these are good months yeah. to good have months, a wedding. Yeah, these yeah. are beautiful months to have yes. a wedding. Yeah. Can Let's, we not do... April? Yeah, you got to be, you gotta oh, be mindful of your guests. You can't plan weddings during hunting season. I told my friend, because I was her maid of honor, and I was like, I hope you know I love you because you are getting married like right in the heat of turkey season, yeah. and I cannot hunt at all Friday or hunt at all Saturday because I'm with you, but I love you, and I'm going to do it. Yeah. But yeah. so I couldn't – I didn't wake up Sunday morning to go, and it was raining anyway, so I wasn't really worried about it. But I went, I went yesterday afternoon, and I was sitting up. It was in Wayne County, and I was sitting up in a cutover in the field and looking out into the field, and my uncle just happened to ride by, and he was like, hey, there's like three turkeys heading across the field towards the truck, which the truck is in the front of the property, and I'm in the way back of the property. I was like, gosh, okay, great. So I literally like get up and start running, and I see him in the field, so I start army crawling, and I'm set up, and then they say, you know, they're going out into the neighbor's property, and it's raining. I'm soaking wet. 
And that that's just part of the <laughs> getting hunted by the turkeys at that point. And so we're like, all right, whatever. That that Tom's hand up. It was two hands on Tom. We're like, yeah, he ain't going to come off of it. So whatever. So we went to a different spot and we walk out into the field and we see a hen. So we try to go back around and we sat there for a little bit. And one of my buddies said he saw a Tom, but nobody else saw it but him. So we're like, all right. And we tried to wait him out, but it was it started raining really hard and we couldn't get on him. But I'm hoping this week is the week because it has been a season that is for sure. I've had a lot of close calls. Opening day, oh, opening day was definitely a story because the field I was hunting in, the uh, field right beside me was – I looked up on Onyx. It was somebody that lived in Utah. So I was like, all right, to be sure. They won't catch me. I'm going to hunt on there. They live in Utah. I know what you were thinking. They live in Utah. They're not coming from Utah. They actually listen to this podcast. Yeah. Y'all are listening. <laughs> to be sure, they're not coming from gotcha. Utah to turkey hunt. So I won't have to worry about someone hunting right beside me. I, I gotcha. even told my uncle, I was like, I don't want to set up like right beside somebody. He's all, and don't worry about it. Like they're in Utah anyways. And he, I was like, all right, perfect. Well, can't just assume because a farmer that tends that field was definitely out there on opening oh, day no. set up right beside us and they had them hot off the roost and we literally watched them fly down right into their decoys a big group of them heard them shoot five times <laughs> yes. so and only drop up. one bird oh, no. and so that was just heartbreaking to watch and then after that we couldn't make them make a sound at all so that was heartbreaking because I was I knew those turkeys were there. I had scouted all week there, and we're like, all right, we're we're getting we're going to double up this morning. Like we were confident in it, and I was so excited because I was like, I'm about to give me an opening day bird. And then I saw them out there, and my heart just broke. And then five <laughs> shots later, one bird on the ground, and I just watched it all unfold. And I was like, dang it, we got time left. Yes, I'm hoping weeks. I'm hoping this week. This is the one weekend I don't have a wedding to go to because last weekend wasn't the only wedding. I have like eight weddings to go to yeah. this year. Mm. You're at that age it's now tough, like, that everybody's getting married and having babies. And so there's parties and showers. I think, was, yeah, I think it was three years ago now. I had a wedding every Saturday of April. And I was just like, yeah. yes. I've, I've gone to. I'm questioning if, you, if I like you guys that much. Yeah, I've gone to three weddings already this year. One in March and two this month. I would say it gets better, and it does get better for a little while, but the age I am now, I'm going to all my yeah, friends' second to... weddings. <laughs> <laughs> just it happens like just that kidding. sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, Beach Fest. You better go to Beach Fest Saturday. What the heck? I would love to go, but you know how I was just talking about uh, showers. There's another shower this weekend. <laughs> I, I plan to go for the first little bit. Okay. I'm going to go turkey hunting that morning All and right. then go for a little bit. Mom has already texted me and Harley, and we're like, we will be there for a little bit, All but right. we got a shower to go to. Well, you know, well. I love beach music. I will definitely be there. Yeah. Heck, yeah. It's going to be a good weekend, too. Pretty yes. weather. Yeah. Uh, we mentioned while I go, a lot of birds being killed. We got we to gotta give a quick shout out. We're already on 50 minutes. We've been talking for y'all. I told you it goes by fast. <laughs> uh, this past Saturday, uh, so this past Saturday was the second Saturday of the season, and and uh, uh, Josh that was here last episode, his little man Chase Chase killed a nice bird first thing. Uh, Miss Ashley killed a bird after yep. him down on the coast of North Carolina. Uh, she killed one Saturday, and then after that was uh, Miss Morgan. Miss Morgan's been trying three years now. Morgan Bridgers, mm -hmm. a shout out to Morgan on her bird this past Saturday, and then right after her was. Uh, Another pro staffer, Mr. Uh, David. David Douglas killed one, yep. too. A lot of birds were killed back to back to yes. back first thing Saturday morning. Yeah, a lot of birds have been talking. killed, period, this yeah. season. There was a lot of birds killed this year. Well, yes. we could talk. And our time's winding down, but we, we, we can talk about it next time, I guess. But we talked about it last last episode, how there's more and more birds back this way, yeah. which is good. Yeah. More folks are getting into hunting. More folks are having birds to hunt. Which is good for business, of course, because we're selling more stuff. But, uh, but now I like to see all these folks killing birds, and more folks are getting into turkey hunting in this area. And ten years ago, it was hard to even see a bird anywhere around here. Yeah. And now, this past Saturday, just in our close, close little circle of folks here, you know, four were killed in a couple hours. Yeah. Which was pretty cool. So. And I feel like birds have been getting killed early in the morning this year. Like first thing. Yeah. First like thing. when I watched yeah. those guys kill them opening day, it was still like 6 45 and they already had a bird on yep. the ground and i'm like wow yeah. and i feel like all my friends that have killed birds this year they're just dropping them like 
Early, yeah. early. Our opening day hunt, we had two birds killed at 635 that morning, and then mine bird this past Friday, I killed mine, it was 650. Yeah. So both of them before 7 o'clock, which is good. Yeah. Because I like to hunt and get on back to work. So <laughs> works out good that way. Uh, what else you want to share, Miss Haley? Anything else you want to share while we got the folks listening to us? Any stories or anything else you want to – any advice or – uh, back to what the for the young girls that yep. are trying to get into it seriously don't worry about what people say about you like go out there if it's something you really love and you have a passion for stay to it because yep. like I said you're going to learn so many lessons from it and the older you get the more you don't care about what people have to say about you I remember in high school like you were came out of school you're like oh there's a redneck right there that kind of thing don't worry about it I mean People don't even remember what you say about them. If it doesn't bother you in 10 years, I wouldn't worry about it. Or five seconds from now, you know. It's so funny while you're on that that subject. We were talking at one of the last buying shows uh, with one of our banded sales reps who lives up in Iowa, Illinois. Iowa, somewhere up that Midwest. And, and uh, we're talking about wearing camo because their dad, this guy has two kids. And this is like their kids, like nobody wears camo to school. Yeah. Like around here, guys and girls, I yeah. feel like, wear camo, yeah. like Drake and Sitka and Bandit or whatever it may be, they wear camo to school now. It's kind of like a common thing in this area. But up there, he was like, man, they wear like a, a banded camo jacket. People make fun of them so bad. Guys or girls, like, you can't wear, they don't wear camo at all to school. It's so weird. I think that has become a new thing now in which I really don't like because I just wish everybody would get back to you're all there for the same reason. But, like, Whatever camos you're wearing, it doesn't matter. Whatever gun you have, it doesn't <laughs> matter. It, you don't have to have the brand new thing. And if you do have the brand new thing, don't worry about other people that don't have it saying something. Yeah. Because, of course, I have a Benelli. I, ha- I wear Sidka, and I hear so much crap. Like, oh, you've got to have the newest, baddest thing, whatever. <laughs> if I want to buy it, let me buy it. If I wanted to go out yeah. there with a Stoker and band it on, let me do it. It doesn't yeah. matter what I'm going out there with. So just don't worry about what people have to say. You can go out there with $2,000 worth of clothing on and a $500 shotgun or a $2,000 shotgun and $200 worth of clothing. It really don't matter. You're just out there yeah. for the same reason. It's not a competition. Everybody's just out there to have fun. We talk about camo patterns a lot and brands, and the last few weeks it's, it's been even more relevant to me really in my life because, you know, I, I, I like sick. I, you know, I've had a lot of sick stuff, and I wouldn't had the opportunity to go with a mossy oak guy, so, of course, I wore mossy oak. And, uh, you know, we've had this big debate with Bottomland is, like, killing it right now. Bottomland is oh, by yeah. far the number one camo pattern that we're selling. Uh, Realtree has some new – they have some new patterns coming out for this fall. Sick is still killing it, too. But it's uh, – everybody's got their own opinion on camo. And at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter. No, yeah, not Stay at still, all. wear something dark and stay still, yeah, and you'll yeah. be all right. So. Don't matter. Uh, while we're on camo, speaking of uh, Bottomland, the uh, – Bottomland camo uh, turtle boxes. Uh, so we have just a few of them coming in this week. We're sold out right this second, but hopefully we'll have some more in the next day or two. They're on the way to us from Texas, but um, they're about to be g- gone for for good. So uh, we have some of those coming in this week. Yep. Turtle box is going to be one of the most popular things for the summer. It was really popular last summer, and this year is looking to be the same. Those camouflage T-shirts we should have been wearing during this podcast, which we didn't. Uh, we got in the original bottom land to wash tea. Those have yep. been really popular. They're on springhilloutfitters.com. I saw those. I'll definitely be getting me one before I leave here today. <laughs> it feels so good. <laughs> so soft. Short sleeve. We sold a bunch of those online and in the store. Sizes small through 2X. Um, what else? Turkey and stuff. Kind of winding down on turkey season as far as selling. You know, we're always kind of planning a step in advance. So we're, you know, getting stuff in now for the fall. But we still have some vests and calls and decoys and ammo and clothes and that kind of stuff. Uh, what else? That yeah. New Yeti. Yeah. Got some New Yeti New stuff Yeti, in this past the big week. Wave big blue. Wave Blues here. That's a pretty blue. Yeah, big wave blue and agave teal and king crab orange are the three colors now. Yep. There's uh, a new color coming in the next couple of weeks. They keep coming out with new colors. <laughs> It'll be here soon, but uh, lots of new stuff in the store. Swing by and check us out. Uh, Beach Fest is this weekend. Yep. Talked about how much fun that is. If you're coming to Beach Fest, the farm nc.com, you can buy tickets and Spring Hill Outfitters will be there. We'll have a booth set up selling turtle boxes and selling Yeti cups and coolers and selling the official Beach Fest t shirts. You all can find over at the Spring Hill Outfitters. There'll be a Spring Hill Outfitters tent and a Yeti tent, a turtle box tent, 
probably Kamado Joe tent. Kamado Joe's going to be there as well. So all the tents, come by and see us this coming Saturday at Beach Fest. Say hello and buy some stuff while you're there. Y'all good? Anything else you want to share? Good. It's been fun. Yeah. An hour. Yeah. By fast. Time flew by. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank y'all for tuning in. As always, we'd like to thank Joe again for what he does. Joe Gilly Productions, the man behind the scenes who makes it all happen. Congrats again to him on his bird. Hopefully, he'll be here on the next episode or the next one or two. Yeah, so we can tell, hear that get, story. Get his story yeah. on killing that bird, his first bird. Uh, it was interesting. It'll be a, it'll be a good story, good episode. But thanks to Joe for what he does. Thanks to uh, Miss Haley for joining us today. Yeah, thank y'all for having me. Yeah, it's been good. Uh, find us podcast on all major podcast platforms wherever you listen to podcasts. You can find us YouTube. Just search for Taking It Outside. Facebook, Instagram, look for Spring Hill Outfitters. SpringHillOutfitters.com. If you're ever in the area, swing by the store and say hello. Right here on Interstate 95 at exit 101 between Smithfield and Wilson. Halfway between, I used to say Miami and Maine. I think we're like halfway up and down the whole yeah, East Coast. Yeah, I think it's I like think. Mid We're going to say we're halfway. <laughs> so if you're ever traveling from Miami to Maine and you're on 95, stop by exit 101 here in eastern North Carolina. And you can see us, and you can come take it outside with us and shop with us and listen to all these great stories that we have to tell. Uh, we got some fun episodes coming up. We've actually already got a few lined up. We've been talking to some people. Uh, we'll have to bring Zoom back in for a couple of them. Some of these guests are, are <laughs> afar that can't come in. We're going to have to bring the Zoom. Uh, we figure out how we're going to do that with a new setup. But we got some guests that are going to come join us, talk to, uh, talk to Bo Brooks. Uh, this past week, uh, who's an amazing turkey caller. Y'all know who Bo is on social media. Bo uh, can blow a, do all kinds of stuff with a turkey call like I've never heard anybody do. Not like uh, Foggy Bottom, though. Well, I mean, I'm not, I mean, he's like the second <laughs> best. He's the second best caller that I know of, you know, behind my, myself. But, uh, but talk to him. He's going to try to come join us. And then some of the guys, Drew and the guys from Migra, talked to them this past week about oh, coming to join us for fun. an episode, talking about their turkey loads and then their waterfowl loads. And lots of fun stuff playing. Patrick's going to be here from Kamado Joe coming up this week, getting ready for Beach Fest. Maybe he can come home and do an episode on uh, cooking, getting ready to – it's cooking season, grilling. I don't know about y'all, and I know I need to hush, but like – this time of year, some fresh cucumbers oh, yeah. and tomatoes and vinegar. I could eat it every day. Yes. Yeah. Grilled tomato corn, sandwich. I love my brother tomato literally sandwich. drinks the vinegar after like the yep. cucumbers. I and love a tomato that. sandwich. Tomatoes and cucumbers and vinegar. I think I've had it three days this past week. Seriously, three days cut up with salt, pepper, and vinegar. Uh, fresh. I haven't had any fresh grilled corn in the last couple of weeks. But a Crooked Road Produce, Timmy Creech and Miss Roxy, good friends of ours here at the store. They have fresh, uh, fresh corn in. So. That time of the year, time to go grilling. Yes. Kamado Joe, Traeger, whatever you may have from Spring Hill Outfitters, it's time to take it outside and go grilling and enjoy the outdoors. Kind of, it was, it was warm this past week. Now it's kind of cool again this week. Yes. I opened the door this morning. I was like, geez. Yesterday it was cold. Yeah. And the wind blowing with the rain out there hunting, I was about to freeze. Yeah, <laughs> it was kind of messy yesterday. All right. Thank y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in. Thank y'all for being here. Always a pleasure to join y'all here at Spring Hill Outfitters. And I uh, can't wait to see y'all again for another episode coming up here very soon. Not every Friday, not every week. So make sure you turn those notifications on, subscribe, and so you get the alerts when we have a new episode. And check us out. And until we see y'all again, y'all be safe and don't forget to take it outside. <laughs>